Yeah, this call is now being session. recorded. Oh yeah, someone saying something. So when the class will begin? It will begin in uh, a few minutes. Okay, nice. Hello everyone. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Yeah. Uh, so I am Sakini Pali from Greenline, and uh, I welcome you all to today's session on uh, the world of food. So today's session we have our speaker, Mr. Peter Anthony, and he um, he is part of the program officer. And also, he is a wildlife enthusiast. So he does go on trails to different uh, forests. Around Mumbai quite often, and he definitely conducted a lot of lot of trails in the past when uh, he was um, before COVID basically. And uh, so I'll hand over to Kaden uh, to begin with the session. Just a disclaimer that uh, this session is going to be long, so it might go till five thirty. So please be prepared for it. But then I am sure it will be uh, interesting. And you guys will learn a lot from this session. So, uh, let's do the session. Over to okay. Thank you so much, Dr. Rati, for this introduction. Um, so, uh, before we start the uh, the class, I would like to say, am I audible? Am I clear? Like the volume? Yes, level, sir. Okay? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, great. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So. You, yeah during the whole session what we will do is we will have a lot of question and answer you can use the chat box i would encourage you to use the chat box or just or uh, use your mic and and answer okay there's a lot of interaction in the session that we are going to have just give me a moment hmm. okay is my screen visible Yes, yes, sir. Sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. yes, sir. Now we want to know: Are snakes the brutal yes. killer that we know, or are they some misunderstood creatures? So, the basic introduction: Elongated animals, with limbless. They don't have any hands or legs. They're carnivorous reptiles, and that—that's all the boring stuff. What they are and how they. What do you guys know about snakes? Like, any, anything diff, anything different? Uh, that they are reptiles. Okay, great. Okay. Reptiles some are venomous and they... some are not venomous. Venomous, very nice word. Uh, okay. Uh, reptiles, venomous, and and anything else. They are invertebrates. Snakes are not. Snakes are actually uh, vertebrates. Snakes are not invertebrates. So vertebrates are classified as animals that have a vertebral column. That is a spinal cord. And snakes have a really long spinal cord from the head to their tail. So snakes do have a uh, snakes are vertebrates. Okay, so one fact. Also, there are over three thousand yes, species on the earth of snakes. Yes, there are over three thousand species of snakes. There are yeah, there are there's a massive number of snakes on this world, and uh, okay, any of you know how an approximate number of snakes in India? They swallow their prey whole. They are related to mythological myths. Yes, there are a lot of mythology. Not just in India, all all over the world, there are like a lot of, you know, uh, stories and facts. Not and a lot of cultural significance of snakes. Okay, yeah. Someone was saying, uh, uh about India. How many snakes do you think India has? Sir, more than two hundred. More than two hundred. Okay. Uh, more yes. than three fifty species. The number lies somewhere between three hundred and three fifty. Okay, the numbers keep changing. I wouldn't want to put a definite number because every every uh, every year there are new new species that are split. You know, you you hear new species discovered. So there are some species that are split into two species. Two seventy. No, no, it's it's more than it's more than three hundred and ten, but it's somewhere between three hundred to three fifty in India. Nice. So three twenty-five. Uh, Let's see now. I as I said, don't go for yeah. an exact number. Three fifty. More than two seventy. Don't go for an exact number because if you go for an exact number, it will change the next year. Okay, 
this is an average number that uh, snakes you know it keeps changing because as i said scientists will study a snake and then they'll realize oh shit these two snakes are of two different species or uh, there will be some snakes that uh, we thought were of different species but they are no they are the same species that's just it's one snake with different colors so that is a major thing that happens now what happens is uh, what the snake's body plan the basic body plan this is a very accurate representation i think this is exactly how snakes look right there the mouth this how the mouth open there the is is this an accurate representation no sir okay so uh, this is when you look at this you think it's a basic body plan there are these eyes uh, there's the eye there's the head there's this tongue okay yes, this sir. this is a basic body plan for every snake now my question to you uh snakes uh, the body of a snake is just like an elongated sock right there's a sock you know it's a sock right a socks one of them yes uh, yeah with a hole in the end this is just like a tube so in this small thing how can how can there be variation like what sort of variation is possible so in the scales color of the scales Asha, okay, uh, guys. One more thing. You don't need to actually raise your hand for this. You can just say it, or you can type it in the chat box. Because uh, since other a lot of people raise their hand and then they don't get a chance to speak, so you can just unmute yourself and speak. It's okay if you cut me while I'm speaking. Yes, sir. So the pattern of yeah. the scales. Pattern of scales interesting. What else? What else can be different? So the fangs and the venom in them. Thanks. And Asha. I noticed one thing. Constructive and okay. So, um, e- uh, constriction. Did you mean that yes, constriction? Sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Some are venomous, some are non-venomous. One thing is very smart that you guys use the word venomous and not poisonous. We'll okay. Are there any poisonous snakes in the world? Yes, sir. Yes. Many. Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. There are many snakes poisonous. Um, okay, but are there any venomous snakes? Okay, what is more? There are more venomous snakes or there are more poisonous snakes? Venomous. Why venomous? Why not poisonous? So because venom and poison are two different things. Right, venom and poison are two different things. Actually, yeah, because snakes inject venom in our body, then we die. and there are some species like there is a species of a frog if we touch mm-hmm. its its skin then we die means it on its skin there is poison that is the exact example that i was going to give you all we are going to come in a bit more detail in that later and that was the most perfect answer yes it was, uh, but we will not talk about it now so this is the basic body plan of a snake okay it has a body it has a tail but we still think that there is variation in this basic body plan snakes can see through the eyes and stuff so snakes don't have eyelids like us so they can't close the eyes as such um and interesting that you bought eyes because the first thing that we are going to talk about is the eye so these are the three types of pupils okay uh this is somewhat like us this is this is a wine snake and this is somewhat like a cat now one thing why do all these snakes have different types of eyes what what could be the reason so they are species right they are species so yeah we are so a different so species so they adapt to the environment they are living in very good very close answer they are different species okay they live yeah. in different temperatures and different weather so they need to adapt temperature and weather so temperature does not so. temperature may not play a very big role in this so uh, some snakes have that pit you know the pit viper and all but that is a totally different organ okay now if you look at most snakes that are either ground snakes you know what i'm going to use a lot of uh, google now so okay now this is a wait just so now... okay Now this uh, I have googled a cobra. This is a king cobra. 
Now king cobras have these round eyelids. Okay. King cobras have round eyelids, but when I Google a uh, viper. Pipe, see, a viper has the these straight eyelids. Can you see this? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, now sir. here's the main difference. Okay, when it's it's a type of the environment that the snakes prefer. Now, if the snake is a viper, viper is not very fast moving snake. They live among grass. Some viper. This is a this eye is of a trimericeris that is a arbor. That means that means a viper that lives on the tree. This is the vine snake. This also lives on a tree. This no, is which is the vine snake and which is vine, the viper. Vine. This is the vine snake. And this is probably a viper. So which? See, you you can see the one with the pointed nose. This. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. This. Uh, can you see my mouse actually? No, no sir. No, sir. No, we can't. Okay, now you can see it. Yes, sir. Now yes, now we can. Yes, sir. Now we can. Yes, sir. So this is a vine snake. A vine snakes live in trees, and they have these these type of eyelids. Vipers also live. Sometimes some of them are arboreal. This is an arboreal viper. That means a viper that lives in tree. Uh, they have these elongated eyelids, and this is probably an elapid. Elapids are most venomous snakes that live on uh, you know on land, uh, like uh, cobras, crates, and a lot of these snakes. they what they do is they have these round eyelids and because and each of them have a different function now do you know what's depth perception have you heard of this word depth perception uh, if any one of you uses a camera a lot you probably know so depth perception is in a small range when the snakes have to perceive that uh, the distance between their prey and the surrounding like if there's a lot of grass if there's a lot of branches around then these type of eyelids then these, these these elongated eyelids help a lot but if they live in an open plain or in or in a huge grassland where they have to move fast that in that time this type of eyelids that is better suited for a like our eyelids like we are also better at looking at things when they are uh, in an open place but these eyelids and these eyelids are better adapted for trees a lot of ground vipers also that have a very slow movement have this type of uh, eyelids sorry eyeballs not eyelids okay the next thing that we're going to talk about is the head shape now this is the thing now why why is it why is the head shape important or oh, okay actually we'll go to the head shape later uh I use. You don't need to raise your hand. You can just uh, switch off your mic and say, or just type it in the chat section if you want to ask any question. So in this slide, we'll talk about the scales. Now, if you look at this slide, okay, can anyone tell me which uh, which snake is this? This 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 okay? Yeah, this is which snake? This one. So it's a viper. It is the viper. Perfect answer. Okay, and which is this? Cobra. 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 It's a king cobra. King cobra. Okay, fun fact. Yes, king yes. cobras are not really cobras. Do you know that? No, sir. So how? Is it confusing when I say king cobras are not really cobras? Yes, yes sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, yeah. so, this, so this is how it goes. Snakes. Um, the difference between a cobra and a king cobra is. Somewhat equal to say uh, calling a dog and a cat the same thing. <laughs> confusing, right? It is actually confusing. I understand. Yeah, it's confusing. Yeah. So, uh, cobras come from the genus. Wait, I'll just type it. I'll show you this. Okay. Okay, just a minute. So, when we talk about the genus Naja. that that includes all these cobras they all have these uh, particular type of hood okay um now when i why did i say dog and cat because dog and cat they have four legs they have these pointy ears they have the sharp teeth they probably eat the same thing as well with minute differences okay but they look 
they uh, mostly they have features that the features are quite similar. I mean, obviously, we can tell the difference very easily. So, like But alligator now, and crocodile. No, nah, exactly. Like an alligator and crocodile. An alligator and crocodile are not the same thing, but they look very similar. Okay. And now, when when I look at the genus, okay, this is the king cobra. Now, you see, uh, see these are not. This is not a king cobra, and this is not a king cobra. You can see the difference. Look, look. This, this is how a king cobra looks. Okay, its hood is not as big, and uh, but when you go to cobra. Look at the hood. It's like it, it is quite different. Yes, sir. Okay. So the uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. The width and the shape of. Yeah, and all of all of them uh, are from the same family, but when it comes to species level, like we know dogs and cats are both mammals, but when it comes to species level, we we know that they are totally different. Okay. Actually, if I would say wolf and dog, now that would have been a better analogy. Yes. Uh, Yeah, so because they look also this, uh, quite similar. Okay. So a major major technique by which we can tell snakes apart, actually, that scientists use, is the scale count. The uh, the like there are different types of scales. Like these are the scales that are above the lip are called the supra labial. The ones under the lip are called infra labial. Near the eyes are called ocular. And there are a lot of uh, scales and there are a lot of things that help tell these snakes apart. And I included snails because it might seem boring, but it's still very interesting. Um, I just want to show you one more interesting thing. Okay. Um, so, can you see this part of the snail, the snake? Can you see this, this part? The belly. Yes. The belly yes, part. Yes, sir. Right? Is a okay. Can uh, yeah, how do you think? Colors. Yeah, they are, they are two different colors. But uh, see, this covers the entire belly. You know these long scales at the belly. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, yes, it covers sir. the entire belly. Now this is probably a fast-moving snake. Yes. Now, but but when we look at this, um uh, okay look at this photo look at this the belly scales are so small can you see it is it clear yes sir yes sir yes sir yes sir, yes, sir. Yes, sir. the whole body that touches the ground is quite is quite thick but the belly belly is small so this is how the belly of a snake the scales of the belly help them move in different locations the one that i showed you earlier was a fast moving snake okay that use is called a uh, I don't know the name of that one, sorry. But the second one that I showed you, that's a sand boa. That means that that does not have a that moves like really slow, and it digs a lot. It does not need to have those big belly scales to help movement. So that is one major thing. Scales are a major thing when it comes to snakes. So, okay. yeah. So looking at the snake's belly, can we decide that it's a fast moving snake or a slow moving? So here is the tricky part. Just by looking at the belly, you cannot, because uh, if you look at see this snake, you can see this snake with the the big head and the small body. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Even they have quite huge belly snakes, belly scales. But when you put them on land, they are not that fast. They are called they are arboreal snakes. So they are tree snakes. Okay. So this is one important thing that we need to know. Belly scales are not all one factor is not. Does not help you tell everything about a snake. Okay, it will just help you tell you one or two things. Okay, second part is the important part: the head of the snake. Probably the part that we all need to be worried about. Okay. Okay. Now the, the I've given you three different examples. Okay. What can you tell me about these three examples? How how are they different from each other? So, so can I? Yeah, yeah please go ahead. So in the uh, biggest image, I saw it said head is like triangular shape. Then in the pool image, it is like circular, like uh, oval in shape. And in the third, it is conical. Okay, interesting. Pretty interesting. Um. So in one of the images, the head of the snake is bigger than the body, and in one yeah. image, the head is smaller than the body. Actually, that's exactly what I was looking for. 
shape snake the head shape is a very important factor so is the head size now remember in the last video i showed you i uh, showed you a snake that had small belly scales yes sir okay yes, yes sir why did that that have small belly scales yes sir because it was slow moving snake it, it, it was slow moving snake but i also said one more point about it so because it used so because it used to Digging. Yes. Okay. Now, among the three snakes, which do you think is the best at digging? I'm going inside the ground. So the third one. So the third one. Yeah. Yeah. So, the so, the so the first. So the so the second. One more background. This one. You think this, which is this is the answer? No, sir. The uh, the below the, the below is the python. Sir, below the pool. This one. This one. one. Okay. This one. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. So I just want to write. So now this is what we call a sand boa. Now a sand boa is a snake which has a short, short and muscular body. Look how how its its body short and fat, and by fat it's not fat; it's actually muscular. These snakes it's can dig. Yeah, it is for constriction as well as for dig as well as for burrowing. I don't have a video right now. Um, But sand boas uh, have an amazing ability to dig. When it's wet soil, they can just uh, they just push through it and they can go inside. So this small head helps it push it puts itself inside. Now in this snake, when you see this part, now this one looks like a rat snake. Actually, we can't tell by just an image. Um, but. Uh, So usually uh, snakes have vipers have a thick thick. Uh, this is not a viper, by the way. So usually vipers have some a slightly fat portion here. That's where the venom glands are, and that's why vipers do have a little thick head. So this snake is a cat snake. Okay, it's a tree snake. Now uh, about tree snakes, one important thing that I would want to tell you: Why do you think tree snakes have this fat head? Uh, as I said, just a minute. Sir. Okay, look at this. Uh, I'll go to the previous slide. Yeah, this one. So this is a this is a tree uh, viper, trimeriserus viper. So even this has a fat head compared to its body. Body is thin, head is fat. Even even in this snake, there is a very protruding ridge here. You can see a ridge. So why do tree snakes have the, these uh, ridges, or why why do they have these this thick? Sir, or, so they can. Drag their body on the tree. Hmm, not very descriptive, not bad answer, but okay. Sir, I think you got an answer, so, but yeah, yeah, I didn't put into words. Yes, sir. I think to maintain the balance on the, while they are on trees. Interesting, but see now when 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 it so comes to get to get a grip on the tree, to get a grip on the tree, interesting. Something, something, mo, something, mo, come on, you can do it. <coughs> so, uh, the I think that prey on the trees are bigger in size. That's why. Hmm. Interesting way of thought, though. Okay. I don't think nice so. Nice idea to think about. Okay. So the thing is, how do monkeys climb tree? What What do they use to climb trees? Their hands. Their hands. Their hands. They use their hands. Hands and tail. Leg. So, What do leopards use climb trees? Hands and legs. Okay, let's let's call them limbs. The paws. So they use their. So they use their nails also to grip. Okay, what do squirrels use? Sir, squirrels use their legs and hands. Their legs. So, so what snakes do? What snakes do is they use the support of their head. You know, to climb trees, they uh, they use their head as hands. It acts like a hook for them. Actually, uh, it would be really great if I can show you a video. Uh, just give me a minute. Okay, sir. Uh, okay, one more thing. So, actually, I would uh, want you guys to consent for one thing. So, in this presentation, there are uh, there is one slide where where I would like to show you some road kills. Okay. Uh, just give me a minute. Yes. But in that, um, if you guys are uncomfortable watching dead snakes and uh, uh, 
nature's eye just just a minute please give me a minute so if anyone has any issue you know that um, they find it dif like difficult to watch you know dead animals or something then we'll not uh, go with food with that no problem sir no sir no okay. sir okay just no you sure yes so sir this is, uh, yes sir so this is how a cat snake climbs just a minute okay can can you all see it yes yes sir, yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, how it uses the small ridges from the tree okay to climb on top okay yeah. and this is what the wine snake does now you'll see how it uses the head like a hook slowly extend its body okay extend extend it really long okay let me set part this okay see now now in this section they'll show how it uses its head like a hook okay okay it didn't show it again yeah look at this part can see seen it yes, yes sir all around it yes. it's not yes, very sir. easy for them but now when you talk about snake there's a very interesting type of movement which i would like to show you that a lot of desert snakes use can you see this type of movement have you ever seen this yes sir yes, yes sir radiography yes, yes, yes sir yes sir yes sir yes sir yes sir no sir okay 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 so this snake is is uh, is an alien snake it's not the one that you must have seen on tv it is called a saw-tailed viper okay, okay. so see this this is called this type of movement is called side winding okay there are like a lot of type of movement the basic movement of snake that you see that's called the serpentine motion this is called side winding and uh, okay the myths so how many of you have seen people snakes drinking milk So yes, yesterday only it was not one snake, but only so. Okay, so uh, there's a common practice what snake charmers do. Now they are banned by the government. You know, snake charmers are it's not legal to keep snakes with you. What they do is they uh, they uh, keep the snake in small boxes and the snakes get dehydrated. They don't have water to drink, and when they offer them milk, they just see uh, they use it as a they think it's water and they drink it because they've not had water for a long 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 time but they cannot digest it yeah, they cannot digest milk and then they eventually and so die and it can be harmful for them okay yes uh, it can it can be very harmful for them now there is an other video actually i would not prefer showing it because in that we actually cut the snake's head and they remove small nag money out of it have you seen such a video no so no so no, 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 so you can show yeah. No, I yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I have seen it. Yes, sir. You can show. Yes, sir. Yeah, right. So yes, what they do is actually a lot of these snake charmers, uh, they, you know, the scales of the snake, right? They make a small cut on the head, and they either put a chiku seed or a small glass pellet inside the head, and they show it to people, and then they try to they uh, they cut the head and they remove out the nag money thing. and that is a big myth and people buy those things for like really expensive rates okay um snake if you kill a snake there are uh, nine snakes will come to bite you have you heard of this yes no, sir. Yes, sir. yes sir yes sir many okay, times okay uh, many times so yes sir ha uh, so when i was actually a kid a uh, snake had come near our building and uh, sadly the society people killed it and when they told someone from the society that they killed a snake the person was like really worried the person got oh shit you killed a snake now what is going to happen other most snakes are going to come did you burn the body and and stuff like that so uh, they now all these myths about snakes they are not true have you seen a snake with like two heads or more than that no sir yes sir yes sir in photo no sir Okay. No, sir. Turn photos. Ah, two heads I see. No. No. Okay. No, sir. Now this this snake. Now this type of uh, to see this type of snake in the wild is not uh, 
it's not very uncommon it, it is actually it's uncommon very rare. but it's not impossible so the same thing happens with humans sometime two babies are joined to each other this happened with snakes as well there are two heads growth but now when you see something like this what what ha- do you know the snake is this oh just just give me a minute sorry i was having the wrong okay not- the worm snake yeah right no 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 have you seen this snake such type of snake in a photo not not in reality in a photo Yes, yes, sir. sir. I don't know, sir. Oh, yes, sir. It's not uncommon yes, for snakes to have yes, such a yes, family. Now, this is a birth defect. It's not a. It's not a thing that naturally happens. Okay. Uh, it's a small defect that is common. It's not. Sorry, it's not common, but it happens. Okay. And uh, now there's no. So, sir, there are snakes which have a head on both of their sides. Are you talking about this? Yes, sir. That's a worm snake. It's not. It's actually. It looks like a worm snake, but it's a sand boa. Now, um, so as I said, snake sand boa is a non-venomous snake. It don't. It doesn't have a very good defense strategy. Now, what happens is when when attacked, what the sand boa does. This is its actual head, okay, and this is the tail that looks like a head. Yes. Sir. Over the course of evolution, over millions of years. This snake has learned uh, to use this tail as a false head. Like, let's say if someone hits the snake on its head, what will happen? It will die. So the snake will die. It will die. It will die. It will die. And if someone hits the snake on the tail, so on the table, it will die. 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 It will let's say uh, the spine is damaged and the nerves cannot reach anything but if you hit the snake's tail what organs are there that will be affected the spinal cord so its muscles and reproductive so the, the spinal cord is actually there's actually the end of the spinal cord and no important nerves there so when you hit the snake on the tail it um, it probably can again continue its life if you hit it on its body or on the head the snake will probably die so this is actually yes, like lizard used by a lot of snakes in which their head and tail look the same and when so attacked like cobra uh, sir even lizard sometimes sir and sometimes when they, their tail is cut then they remove their tail and they just run away that happens in some lizards yeah it's a common thing but uh, not not very common with snakes um and usually snakes cannot even grow back their tail once it's cut or injured yeah so what are, what were they saying so what they do is when attacked they usually put the tail in the front and they hide their head and when the attacker tries to attack its head uh, they have a chance to run away okay and sand boas also with slow moving so it's not very helpful so this is where the myth starts now what is important to realize here is most of these myths that that are you know in uh, in the in the world like uh, for example if you kill one snake five more will show up okay or the snakes drink milk or the snakes avenge their partner's death now all these myths are not just random stuff that people said there is some reason why they are there okay there there, there let now let's go back to the introduction to see how did these myths arise So this is a small uh, this image and this uh, what is written not related. So you know the snakes actually cannot hear normal sounds; they move through vibrations. Yes, sir. So when a sapera is you know um, playing his uh, instrument, snake actually reacts to the movement and not to the sound. So uh, here's the thing: in Thailand, people believe that when snakes enter their house, someone in the family would die soon. Now, this is a very interesting thing to say. why can you think that why would this be the reason if they see the snake has entered the house um, so they... maybe the snake has bitten someone and uh, due to the venom it may die now due to that uh, reason so, or sir or maybe the poison because of snake bite so maybe so the poison has evolved in the night and some family now, in the night someone them. would have got bitten And uh, they would have seen the snake going outside, 
and later the person may have died so the uh, superstition so very very interesting very um uh, very interesting sort of thought yes that is one major reason why this could have happened okay a lot of myths are are similar because uh, now what happens is uh, a lot of snakes like kraet have very small teeth and when they bite you you don't even realize it feels like an ant bite and you probably ignore an ant bite and when we have such a bite we don't really worry about you know uh, what's happening and then people they just move on in life and then there's a, there's a sudden death there are cases where a, a crate has bitten a person and the person has died after 3 days which is a which is a huge gap no one would suspect that the person had of a snake bite what happens is because your small teeth the venom doesn't really penetrate inside the body it just remains in the upper layers of the skin and with time within the course of 3 days it's slowly slowly injected in the body symptoms increase and then the person uh, you know dies so most of these myths have some scientific origin like uh, when you say when you kill one snake there are seven snakes now uh, a lot of these snakes have a particular season in which they are most active so when you kill one snake <clears throat> you may probably see nine other of the same species <clears throat> excuse me So this is one major reason for me. Just give me a minute. Yes, sir. I was in the village and nearby. Okay, so there is. This is one of the major reasons from where this myth came. That you know, if you kill one snake, there are there are a lot of others that will show up. So, moving on. The main thing: venom versus poison. Who gave the example of the frog? Sir, yes, sir. I sir, boy, yeah. I gave this answer. Okay, that's that's amazing. So, um, a venom, a venomous snake is some a snake that bites you, and there's like a uh, poison that enters your bloodstream. Okay, the the toxin enters your bloodstream, and then you're affected. That's how venom works. But if something touches your skin, or you eat it and it goes inside your stomach. then it's then because his stomach is actually considered as an external not an external organ but a part of your uh, system that is not um, actually forgot the uh, proper word of for that but it's not considered as yeah, internal organ yeah, see your stomach lining uh, the stomach lining is not exactly considered internal but the yeah the From where it the pancreas and everything is internal organs only. So, Even for example, the poisoning. Huh? Yeah, the, but the lining is not internal uh, because it, it's directly connected to the outside world. Okay. So yeah, so that so when anything affects you through your stomach, okay, when you eat something, or when something touches your skin, then that is poison. But when some something you know bites you and the thing directly goes into your bloodstream, that is venom. Okay. Simple way to remember: if if you bite something and you die, it's poison. If something bites you and you die, it's venom. Okay, it's a very silly way to remember. So, what are snakes? Are they venomous or poisonous? Sir, but it's venomous. not necessary for them to bite. Venomous. No. Venomous. So venomous. 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 Right. Sir, so snakes are venomous. Yes, sir. The no, because they, they cobra, cobra, because they bite us. Hmm. The boom slang. Boom slang. Yeah. Sir, because they injected no. in our nerves. No. Sir, black mamba. Black mamba also uh, venom. The oh, green mamba. I want to show you something interesting. Yeah, very interesting. Now we all know that there are venomous snakes. No python. Okay, so. No, but python. Yeah, no, 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 no. Pythons are non-venomous snakes. They use constriction. So because they uh, gulp, uh, so they uh, directly uh, so take the inside. So the rattlesnake, sir, they just crush the uh, their prey's body. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. They swallow the prey. They're ball snakes. Here's the thing. Now, have you ever? The ball python. You probably have not seen this snake. This Forest is a Japanese tiger keelback. Okay. It is. It is a. It is a highly venomous snake but one thing interesting about the japanese tiger keelback is in this part of its neck it has something called the neutral glands now the neutral glands i don't know how to pronounce it exactly so if i am wrong please forgive me 
one this snake is also a poisonous snake now i said snakes are venomous but when i talk about the japanese tiger kill back it is a poisonous snake as well as a venomous snake because when people go to catch it it can it can actually inject poison from its neck so it will hurt your hand and then probably you will have the effects of that so so we do have poison snakes as well they are very rare and so like a- mozambique spitting cobra spitting cobra is actually are also venomous because uh, the venom from a spitting cobra will not affect you if it touches your skin it causes temporary so blindness so in the yes, eye so some people have allergies and it could go red and all yeah see you can allergies would not be uh, considered when it comes to you know poison and venom i have a question hmm okay moving on the big four okay do you know which four snakes are these have you heard of the big four yes, yes sir yes sir yes sir yeah. yes sir so why the name the yes, big sir. four so because uh, they are like the dominant species like when they in found in india okay i have not added the name there for a reason so yeah they are the now the big four are called the big four because of few major reasons reason number 1 they are the most widely spread snakes of india okay you can find literally all of these snakes everywhere like um, i have in my life whenever i have gone like where i live i have seen almost all, all of these four snakes are present if you go to any other state there too you will find all these four snakes these big four snakes have their presence all over the country the big four are highly venomous and they are probably one of the four most venomous snakes of india now this is another photo um are the are these snakes venomous the ones that i showed you in the photo yes sir yes, yes sir. sir yes sir yes sir that yes sir which snakes are they sir spectacle cobra, cobra. Yes, sir, they are venomous okay. is it is it just a spectacle cobra and a common yes, sir, it's a cobra see here is the confusion now this here is a spectacle cobra but this is a rat snake it's non venomous it's a non venomous snake but they look like a spectacle cobra and people often get confused it is very very important that you know this distinction between a venomous and <coughs> i'm so sorry and a non venomous snake the, these small patterns of a of a snake help you really identify so like so green not... mambas and grass snake sorry what so like green mambas and grass snake green so grass snake actually the, the term grass snake applies to a lot of snakes we have an indian thing that is a grass snake and we probably have even the word vine snake so you can't really call it talk about one snake when it's saying grass snake even rat snake so this is an indian rat snake or a common rat common indian rat snake and uh, rat snakes are snakes that eat rats it's quite simple they are very very beneficial for humans okay If you have a rat snake in your locality, it's it's preferable to let them be there, because they they control rat populations uh, by um like by a huge by a big number. There was a there was a study on this which uh, concluded that one rat snake in its lifetime would eat around ten thousand rats. Okay, that is a huge number. That is something that humans cannot achieve. Yes, sir. You know, government actually pays people to kill rats. uh you, so when they change you get in yeah when people would be paid for, to kill rats and and if they show them the the dead rat they would be paid not it wasn't a big amount but still that is a desperate attempt that we need against rats because uh, they cause disease they spread uh, uh, dirt everywhere they you know um, they have a lot of economic problems also uh, they they dig the, the holes that they dig you know they sometimes have problem with the foundation of buildings So yeah, yes, the rat snake is so the rat extinct. Yeah, they bite wires. They cause a lot of uh, damage as well, and disease. Disease is like not a hidden. Everyone knows the dangers of disease. But a rat snake, they don't have any such problems. They won't, uh, you know, prefer being with humans or even coming in contact with humans. So having a rat snake in your locality is not as bad, but having a cobra can be scary. Okay, is the it's best. Uh, you know, call a rescuer or something. 
the next distinction cobra cobra is the only okay that every person you guys know which snake is this so great uh, okay, so the sauce pipes in it, sauce snake, skill snake, viper. Uh, someone said it That's is a sauce killed viper. viper. Now, are both of them a sauce killed viper? Are both of them sauce killed viper? No, 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 sir. 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 Okay, actually, if I show you this photo, uh, so this is a. I hope you can't see the name of the snake. Uh, is this a saw scaled viper? No, sir. No, sir. Why? Why is yes, it not? No, sir. No, sir. Yeah, why, why, like, okay, no, sir, yeah, but why is it not a saw scaled viper? Sir, eye structure and head structure. I structure. Okay, interesting. Uh, Say thin. So the pattern on it. Okay. Pattern on the skin. Pattern. So the distribution of scales. Okay, I'll I'll need another image actually. Mm hmm. Just give me a minute. Okay, so this is this is the image of a saw scaled viper. How is this different? Uh, uh, how is this different from this? Same. So the color. Actually, color is slightly different. See, this is another color. viper. So the head is very big from the body. Head shape of the head. So, so this one. Change? This one is actually a cat snake. It's a common cat snake. Common cat snakes also have this uh, big pointed head. As I said, you know, vipers have this extended head where they have the venom glands. Remember, I told you about that. That is why they have a broad shape. Yeah, they have a broad, broad shaped head, but cat snakes also have a broad head. Cat, so how can you differentiate between them? One major way of differentiating is the sitting style. Okay, uh, you can see how the cat snake has S S like S patterns, which are not very regular. The saw scaled viper has more of a C type pattern. Coil. The coil, but this, uh, but even then, if you see them in the wild, there's no reason why you should touch them. It's very, very they are very dangerous. Cat snakes are not dangerous, but still avoid touching them. The other thing is called keeled scales. You know why is the saw scaled viper called a saw scaled viper? Because it has saw like scales. Yes, sir. Let's let's show you something. So because it is as deadly as a saw, uh, means as sharp mm -hmm. like Wait, wait, wait. Just give me a moment. I'll just see if I can get that. Sir, its scales are like a saw. The shape of saw. Okay. So this is just, uh, just, just give me a second. I think I'll have to, as I said, this lecture is going to extend. Uh, so the saw scaled viper scales are keeled. You'd call them keeled and you'd call them keeled for a very, very important reason. Because saw scaled vipers just, okay, now this. It's not preferred it's to. But I'm not actually offering the sound of the video because there's something that I need to show. Okay. See, can you hear a sound? That's like a rattlesnake. Yes, we can hear the sound. Can you hear the sound? He sings. He sings sound. No sound. And why it has the name the Source Scale Viper is that. Okay. Yes, sir, we can hear the sound. Understood, sir. Understood. Yeah, so that's why it's called a saw scaled viper. All the snakes because, uh, in this area. What they do is they rub their scales around. So, this is an important feature to know. The sound is like sizzling. Venomous snakes usually hiss. Okay. Uh, sir, like the rattlesnake. It's like the rattlesnake, but it's by rubbing of the scales. So these are two important snakes. This is the most venomous snake of India. It's called the common crate. Common crate. 
Yeah, and this is a wolf snake. Okay, they are no, small and non-venomous, and so they are very similar. They are very very similar. Yes, sir. Like, I will tell the difference when you see them. One major difference is crates so, usually. Okay, so remember when I say this, I see <coughs> shape of the head. But now remember the shape. Thing. Okay, whenever I'm saying something, I'm using the word usually because there are always anomalies. Okay, when I say usually, I'm saying. that usually crates have a black head and the band start later whereas wolf snakes have a band from the start of their head now that is not always the case there can be some crates which will have a band or there can be some wolf snakes which will not have the band but that uh, does not mean uh, but still remember this Mostly. sometimes yeah sometimes it's extremely difficult to differentiate even i or even i know very proper well trained rescuers refrain from touching a snake even if they know that it's not venomous because some these uh, this is called as mimicry where one animal tries to mimic another dangerous animal so that predator mm-hmm. to attack it okay so remember never ever touch a snake because sometimes this mimicry is too good and when the mimicry is too good you can even we can't differentiate Okay, this again the sand boa and this is the Russell viper. Russell viper. Now the Russell viper, the sand boa has an irregular pattern. Okay, and uh, the Russell viper is also similar. It has these, it has these chain-like pattern. It's also called the Indian chain snake sometimes, but it's not a very popular name. Now, uh, Russell viper is also responsible for a lot of deaths in India. We'll come to that later. Why these deaths happen? Uh, so means Russell vipers are very dangerous. Russell vipers are very dangerous snakes, and they are vipers. They have these amazing strike speed. They uh, compared to cobras and compared to. Sir, they are very alert. Yeah, compared Pasta. to cobras and cats, uh, which may not have a very very uh, fast striking speed, Russell vipers have this coil-like movement. If you've seen, okay, the the coil that they make, the S-shaped coil, and the, that they use as a spring to pounce and attack. Okay. that uh, is incredible the way they do that so remember the chain like pattern is russell the viper this pattern may not always be the same but uh, just remember do not attempt to touch anything i'm really repeating this a lot because this is very important there was a person russell the viper a small and fat uh russell the viper a small and fat uh, so many people think that they are python so they are sand boa and they attempt to catch it there was a recent video where someone thought it's a python and he picked it up and the person picked it up in a very very wrong way and got bit the russell viper didn't even bite him the first time he picked it up in the center of his body and when he used the other hand to touch the snake that's when the snake bit him and the person actually died it's a recent news so again do not attempt to touch a snake if, even if you think it's non venomous it's best to call a professional rescuer So what should uh, what number should we like uh, call on uh, to if we see a snake or we want to call a rescuer? Oh, actually, I was going to provide you with numbers with, with, of rescuers, but one major problem is that when you try to contact a rescue, when I, when I give you a number, that will be from my area. What's yeah. best is you can Google on even if you just Google snake rescuers near me or, or snake rescuer in Mumbai, you get a ton of contacts and they do it for free. They don't charge anything. So uh, do do call a snake rescue as soon as you encounter a snake. Okay, if it's in your civilization, if it's not, if it's in the wild or if it's in grass, let it be. Ignore it. It's there where it has to be. Now these are a few rules when you get bitten by a snake. Okay, do you know anyone who has been bitten by a venomous animal? No. Okay. Uh, well, now you do. I was once bitten by a scorpion, which may not be as dangerous as a snake, but it can sometimes have an allergic reaction. So this is actually my first-hand experience. Uh, the first thing, the first thing that uh, is said that keep keep your keep the bitten area lower than the heart. Uh, that is. That's a relation. That that does okay. Uh, before before I did. More. What what solutions have you seen ab- about snake bite? How can we prevent? Can How can we? Yeah, yeah please go. Ahead. Like to tie the cloth uh, above uh, the uh, bitten area. Okay. No. Uh, okay. No. How tight do you tie the cloth? 
So, so like we stop the blood flow. Sir, yeah. sir if we do that, so if we do yeah, that, we can paralyze our hand as there will be no blood circulation and plus the uh, effects of the venom. So uh, your answer is partly right. It will it will have uh, it will stop the blood circulation and the venom is inside the part. Now when it's a viper bite, what happens is vipers have something called a cytotoxic or a hemotoxic venom. What that hemotoxic does is it causes a lot of internal bleeding. Now a crate and a cobra will stop your 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 brain signal to your muscles. Okay, yeah, we'll come we'll come to that uh, because that is that we should go to the doctor. But see, when you when you when you have any snake bite and you tie that, the venom keeps affecting the that part of your limb. Okay, and when you go to the doctor, you'll have to amputate. Okay, you can. Uh, Remember, all of these, uh, all of these options are only temporary solutions till you reach the doctor. All of these, when all of these options can only prolong your your effect. Like a first aid. Yeah, like a first aid, and none of these have to be taken as uh, something that you know that I will do this and I'll be safe. Unless you go to the doctor, unless there's anti venom that is injected, no one can be safe, and a, a normal person cannot. The remedy. Yeah, not exactly a remedy. It's not a remedy. It is something to delay the death, actually. So meanwhile, you can reach the doctor. Okay, cover the bitten area with the see. Uh, see now, keep the bitten area lower than the heart. Okay, that is uh, if you have a stretcher or if you have something okay. that you can lie down on while the people take you. Like if you have a car or something, the person needs to lie down. If it's bitten on the hand, they need to keep the hand downward. Uh, cover the area with cool and moist. Yeah. That is to reduce the blood supply. Monitor your heartbeat. Now. When I was bitten, I remember one thing that it is very difficult to stay calm. Okay, you think, you try to take deep breaths and stay calm, but you constantly worried. You know what if I die? What if I die? That time I didn't know. Scorpion bites do not kill adult people. They uh, do kill children because of the small body size. I was a teenager actually that time, and it was scary. Okay, and I broke a lot of these rules. I held my finger, like I held my hand really tight. Okay, which it which really helped uh, made my hand swell up. So um, remove all rings and watches. This is a very very important thing. Okay. Yes, um, sir. Yeah, because once you have a snake bite, what's going to happen is your hand. It will swell up. Swell up. Sir, so it swells up so much that it will be tough to remove it. Right. You uh, it once it swells up, you can't remove it. So remove anything that is tightly stuck to your skin. Okay. Okay, sir. Don't try to suck the venom out. That is a lot of thing that Bollywood shows you very popularly. You know they. Sir, and if so, if yeah. we do that, the venom so will go in the mouth and it will affect the in 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 in. Uh, yes, sir. It's like it's that part may part. not necessarily happen. Sir, okay, it can happen if you have some wounds. Some people remove it, suck it by their mouth, and it goes in the intestine. So it's like and it can damage more. See, here's so the thing. So if we have cuts in our mouth, sir, it can again go in our blood tract. That all can happen, okay? That all can happen, um, but you must you need to remember one thing: that when you you try to suck the venom, its venom is hardly any venom is going to come out because the venom has already traveled a quite a bit distance. Okay, it's, it's you can't remove all the blood from your hand. Okay, our blood flow is not very. What we do when we lower a hand or something is we just prevent the speed, but the venom has already spread out in the in the local area. Okay, it has already spread out in the local area. Avoid physical activity. This I have added because it's very difficult to you know. Don't run to the doctor. You want to run, rush to the doctor, but don't run or you know use a lot. This thing, okay. Try to get someone's help. Use a vehicle. And so because the hard way, because the hard way, hard way, hard way go fast. Because that circulation will increase. Okay. So these are a few things that you need to remember. Now the conflict. This part is the last part of the of our session, but it's probably the longest part. So, do you know which animal kills the most people in India? Common threat? No, it's an animal. The leopard. In general. The leopard. So it's a leopard or a tiger or something. Oh, yeah, even. So snakes. So. Anaconda. So it can be. Okay, Sakshi, why would you say anaconda out of everything? Sir, so it can. Sir, so it can like, be a mosquito. It probably can be a mosquito. I the mosquito, mosquito, mosquito. Mosquito. Okay, but 
but on record the disease is malaria yeah, on record that we have Just mosquito kills dengue. the most number of people worldwide in india snakes have the maximum number of kills okay okay one more thing um that uh, anaconda are not in india okay there are south there are south american snake and they are the largest or the, or the biggest snakes but in india we have a snake that is longer than the anaconda Does anyone know about rock that? Rock python. No, rock python. Cobra. It's not the longest. No, sir, sure, it's not long. Cobra. The king cobra. King cobra is the longest venomous snake in the world, but it's not bigger than an anaconda. Anaconda is twenty feet. Do I mean? It's found in India. I also know that. So, here's the thing. In India, we have something called the reticulated python. Yes, sir. The reticulated okay. python is now reticulated python bigger. is not big is not bigger than the anaconda. It's like the same size. The no, pattern. Can you repeat? Python. Yeah. So same. that one was not the uh, not the of the average size. Look at this reticulated python. I um, mean, okay, this not a proper. This is uh, this is a reticulated python. Uh, this is another image. So these snakes are thin, thinner than anacondas, but they are longer. When you go to an anaconda, anaconda is fat and slight. One school bus. So the third image was a ball python, right? Wait, ball python? No, there's no ball python. Wait, 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 wait. Where can you see ball python? Is it there here? The third image above. Okay. No, this is a probably a reticulated python. It's not a ball python. Okay. So it was curled up in that way. Mm, wait, just a minute. Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, so green anacondas are the biggest. You, as you can see, they are quite fat compared to their body size. Okay, that's make that so makes. They are like tires. Like a tire. So they are as big as a school bus in length. So that's yeah, but five. yeah, when you talk about reticulated pythons, uh, it's. Uh, They are really long compared to this thing. Really, really long. Okay, but they are not very. And uh, the other thing, snakes kill the most people. It's not leopards. Leopards. Okay, leopards only prefer attacking humans. Nor do snakes. Why there are the most snake bites, and why do snakes kill most people? We'll get back to that later on. You don't need to hate snakes for this. Okay. Those so snakes do kill people. Sir, that happens because the people try to touch the snake, see what it is, and uh, the snake we'll get, may we'll get, get to all that. We'll get to all that. Wait, uh, Chintal, wait. Okay. Yes, Now, sir, no. there's a lot of disturbance. Okay. Yeah, there's there's one person who has the Cartoon Network in the background. I think. I think Munmay has Cartoon Network in the back. I don't know. Okay, the other thing. So, have you heard these two lines? Okay. Red and yellow kill the fellow. Have you heard this thing? Red and so can you repeat? Yes, sir. If, if they are yeah, red and yellow stripe stripes, you can kill them. If they are like brown and this thing, you can leave them. Yes, sir. No, sir. No, sir. I had not heard it. So actually, when I was small, we had this common thing that you know how to tell between a venomous snake. Okay. So this was a very popular thing, you know. If it's uh, just give me a minute, okay, yeah. Coral snakes versus corn snakes. They look very similar, but uh, this is a coral snake. This is a corn snake. Hello. And one major problem that we face today in uh, from the Indian snakes community is that the coral snakes and the corn snakes are not Indian snakes. Most Indian people, um, guys, if you have any question, don't click on raise the hand. You can just ask directly because there are a lot of people. We we'll actually lose count if we check the raise, raise hand. You can just unmute yourself and ask a question, or you can put it in the chat box. Yeah. So most snakes that we talk about, we talk about anacondas, we talk about uh, these black mambas, green mambas. So rattlesnakes. Rattlesnakes. These snakes are snakes that we will never come in contact with. Probably never come in contact with because. <coughs> uh, Because these snakes are not the ones that are regularly here, you are more likely to come in contact with a crate or a cobra, which is found here in abundance. Okay, they have declining populations, but they are not. But it is still. But they are rare. Rare. Okay, 
yeah the red touch safe for jack things like that now these snakes that we talk we see a lot of discovery and, and the whole uh, they have a lot of focus on north america south america africa and these snakes are, are a lot uh, you know cotton mouths and coppers these snakes are venomous and are dangerous snakes but you don't come in contact with them so it's important to know about the snakes that are around us right now okay that's a very important thing and that is why the conflict arises because we come in contact with snakes okay this is the number in 2011 a paper estimated that 46000 people died 2005 in 2020 the average was 58000 now something weird about this is is there something weird yes sir i think the snake population has decreased snake we can't say that based on it possibly would have decreased because of people killing it and stuff like that but here's the thing so, uh, the it's paper of 2011, 2011 is giving uh, the news of 2005 no 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 uh, see in 2000 in 2005 there were 46000 bites oh <laughs> But in 2020, yeah. sir, that means was, people are getting if, careless and just touching snakes. See, that is not the main reason. Reasons. One major reason. Yeah, please go ahead. What the reason? What do you think? The the two reasons must be that uh, in 2020, as a lockdown and everything, uh, this uh, they had the breeding. Oh, this. They must okay, this is not related to the lockdown. Yay. In fact, in the lockdown, people are at home, so they probably were less likely to be bitten by snakes. So what happens is, first of all, the science gets better. We get better at keeping records, and we record more people. Okay, we record more people. The other main reason is habitat destruction. Habitat destruction as well as urbanization. So we'll talk about urbanization first. Now, when a uh, when there is a when there's a village, okay, when there's a village or or a jungle, there is a uh, there are and there's a rat okay there are rats and there's a cat that will eat the rat there are other wild animals that will hunt on a rat okay there are some insects and there are some birds okay there's a, there's, there are these kites or these eagles that might attack a rat or and there are snakes but now when you come to a city when you come to slightly more urban area okay The, the all these animals pop the wild cats even the domestic cats or uh, the eagles and the birds of prey that attack these rats they are not as common okay so this is what happens is there are now more snakes that are attracted to rats okay these snakes come in and guys am i audible to all of you yes sir yes sir okay great yes sir yeah that's how yes, sir, that's are. how Yes. So that is what happens. A lot of these snakes attract are attracted to rats and move to our cities. And as the cities get crowded and clustered and uh, more dirty, more snake, more rats are you know there are there's like a boom in rat population, attracting more snakes. And that is one reason where uh, snakes snakes and humans come in contact and either the snake dies or the human dies. Is there a show snakes? What do you mean show snakes? Uh, are you talking about snake show? Yes, sir. So actually, that's not okay. it's not legal okay. to have a snake show in India because uh, so if you're not show, so a snake so, uh, like, like a show time. would come on National yes, Geographic. Sir. Yes, sir. That. Okay, okay, okay. What was it about? Snakes in the city. The snakes, snakes in the, in the city. city. Snakes in the city. So it was about yeah, uh, that is how to by Simon. Simon and Susie. Oh, okay. Was it about India? No, sir. Africa. No, sir. Africa. Oh, about Africa. 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 Durban, South Africa. Okay, okay, okay. Yes, so, so Durban Africa. and Cape Town. Okay. Now this is another so, major, 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 uh now let's say there is a small jungle near a village okay and there is a small company or there is a company uh, that wants to build a factory there now they'll go ahead they'll destroy the jungle and they'll build their factory all the animals from the factory are pushed outwards 
okay and now the animals have lesser space so the animals will move in this in the nearby areas and they move in the nearest village okay and that is when humans and animals come in contact the other reason is when humans encroach and they build houses that were originally in jungles now when this happens also there's a big problem that snakes usually you know uh, come in contact with humans and there there is an increase in snake bite now as a uh, as like as an indian we all want development we all want a uh, urbanized a very modernized city but what we are not doing what most other countries are doing is that uh, we are not looking at a sustainable model uh guys if this is becoming too difficult or too complicated you can tell me i'll simplify it down a sustainable model of a city is something where the wildlife or the environment and the human city can live together in peace okay that means we'll build a house that will uh, not uh, need a lot of cutting of trees or a generation of electricity does not cause pollution that is a sustainable model that we can use for a long time so uh, this is what we need to plan even while building a factory and all so that wildlife is not pushed towards the uh, wildlife is not pushed towards the village as you know there are a lot of human elephant con- conflicts that have happened recently a lot of uh, elephants are seen in cities people throwing fire at them have you seen a video of that yes yes sir. Sir. so they had come on road and people were just throwing yeah. fire so now the people are throwing fire obviously we all are angry on them they, but we should we need to remember that these cases these cases of these fire throwing and these cases where the people happen in places like assam and kerala okay these are now assam and kerala have a rich elephant population and they also have a good biodiversity elephants are animals that use ancient routes okay they have one road route to go every year okay they migrate in those routes now when you cut down their habitat to make a road in between elephants are bound to use that road okay uh, they go to they go to uh, the farms and they are where once was a jungle now there are farms so this the same thing happens with snakes now we can't blame the villagers because the villagers need access to food villagers need access to you know hospitals and schools yes so they build roads yeah they build the roads they build their farms we are okay, the biggest but... threat from the for the animals sorry what we are the biggest problem for the animals yeah we are the biggest problem but when we say we who are we is it the villager who build the road or is it an industrialist who cut down a big chunk of forest to build their industry there it's easy to like you know uh, blame and then uh, yeah, but this is an easy this is an important thing that we need to think about okay um the, this is a the ethical rescue now i don't know who this person is but the technique that this person is using uh quick uh, this thing now so when i talk about snake rescue it's important that you you never attempt to touch a snake um there are there are people maharashtra government is own uh, has uh, not real, i think this happened a few years ago it was it was the only government where some people are accepted that you know these guys are allowed to technically it's not legal for anyone to touch a snake but in maharashtra you can uh, you can you are allowed to rescue it rescue like pick it up and leave it somewhere else okay uh, in india it's not allowed to even touch a snake so yeah there is a program on tv uh, there are so many snakes and there are they are on in the houses and the people from the rescue snake the uh, center come and catch the snakes and put them and kill them hmm right so this is actually happened the rescue doesn't reach in time people usually kill the snake rescue also not every time perfect they are not able to uh, rescue every snake and they don't they work for free they don't have any they don't take any charge for that for rescue the snake or some people do but uh, 
for the ones who are taking their time to come to you and rescue the snake and risking their life is actually unfair to um, uh, to say things to them okay so, but so it's also like uh, right. they should come in time because if the snake is harming someone then obviously we will react no like the people will react people will react now you know the thing the snake when it's in the city usually if it's left alone um it will probably go to some corner and uh, you know not uh, it will go to some corner and try to hide there from people and the rest of the beach on time people do kill snakes but what we need to learn is that it's important that we rescue these snakes because even killing a snake is not legal according to the indian constitution you need to call a rescuer and get it uh, removed okay the next thing now this is the ethical rescuer now whenever you see a rescuer what they what you need to see is do they have this type of equipment this is this is called a snake hook uh this is a tong yeah this is called a, this is a no tong is different this is a tong okay this is a hook and this is the bag now all this equipment helps them to put the snake inside this bag without uh without disturbing the snake too much okay or without even end- endangering their own life so this is an important thing okay and this is an, an ethical way of rescuing a snake uh this is something that is very very uh, bad actually i i'm not sure if i should show this or something uh, i've covered this person's face but this is the person's face and this is this looks like a python from it a baby python from its uh, basic structure now this is a very very wrong thing to do now what happens is uh, when people uh, do such things when they uh, bring snakes so close to their face or when they pose with snakes okay this is an example of posing with snakes now when they do this uh, it's like these guys uh, actually the person who's posing right now in this image uh, the person posing in this image has been bitten by snakes multiple times and reached the icu i don't want to name the person here but this person may be may be good at handling snakes but teenagers and young people usually get you know uh, uh, get inspired by this and um, they try to use this and right now with the whole instagram trend with reels and all a lot of people want to pose with snakes so a lot of people use these snakes for likes and one day suddenly the forest department gets angry randomly picks up people which it's, it's a good thing that's happening but a lot of people there are like millions of people posting these photos with snakes and posting and you don't know when there can be a, there can be a so then there can be an incident where someone will die yeah yeah please go ahead so what is posing posing with snakes is is what you can see this person is doing he is posing for the camera the you know when you when you, when you hold a snake and you try to show it off to people oh yeah so that is called uh, posing okay uh, just just a minute huh? okay now i'll show, show you a few news articles mm just a minute just a minute huh? Give me a minute. So actually, I'm not finding a proper article that says. But now I'll I'll just uh, say it. So what happens is a lot of these a lot of people when they, uh, you know, go to rescue these snakes. And this person is trying to kiss the hood from behind. Um. Okay. This will come to this later. So what happens is when they do such things and when it's used for photo for likes and for uh, comments for this whole Instagram or Facebook reach, social media basically, um, it it does send out a message and people more people try to copy that, and a lot of people get bitten on their face and on the face is very it's actually close to your vital organs. Okay, it's, it's uh, a brain. And, yeah, and that's when the real problem happens. now th- it's important to realize that it uh, hold it. this is however this is illegal it's not known to a lot of people 
so um, i would really discourage this or if you know anyone trying this uh, it's good to tell them to not do that if a rescue comes to your society um, is they need to come bag the snake not in a not, don't put it in a bottle with proper equipment put it in a bag and take it away and release it within 2 uh, hours now uh, after this all of these are some problem that snakes face and what happens with this is later on when someone dies because of a snake bite the ones to be blamed uh, yeah we'll actually come to that point uh, rudresh uh, but yeah when uh, there are a lot of these snake bites when rescuers die of snake bites um what happens is the snake gets blamed for that not the person who tried the stunt a lot of good rescuers also get bit but there's a less chance okay the next part is this roads why why would i add roads here like you know in a snake presentation this looks like a it's the road kills road kills right okay there are a few graphic images about dead snakes it's up to you if anyone has a, i'm going to show them now but if you think i should not i would not show them so is it okay Hi. so boom slang uh, was crushed by a car and then uh, it had to uh, they had to kill that uh, snake because uh, it had a uh, damaged spine euthanize see yeah you can call it euthanize but um, again yeah boom slang okay uh, but a lot of boom slang is an african snake right i'm not sure of where is it yes i am telling about africa only yeah so boom but see uh, a lot so these problems of road kills happen actually all over the world but most countries have 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 underpasses or overpasses for wild animals snakes may not always be able to cross them um okay just give me just give me a minute i'm just uh, opening the folder yes sir so actually some images are actually quite disturbing because uh, okay some images are disturbing because uh, they are like the snake's body is torn apart and stuff like that uh that is okay okay So see, these are a few animals that were killed on the road. Okay, um, this is a checkered keelback that was killed. A small beetle, frogs. Okay, this. Uh, so a lot of these animals. See, this is a buff strip keelback. This is a crate. This is a crate. Echoes. All of these animals, when they come on road, on the road. Why do they come on the road? Is one major reason is. uh that road due to the habit it's not a habit so road because they, earlier it can be their own path so this is no so they don't understand what means like the what the roads and no sir the roads so for that that they were so the, earlier that, the, that can be their own path so first so, first beginning of the road there was their home interesting but there is one major reason why snakes actually prefer coming on the road in search of food uh okay that is not exactly the reason uh, what happens is roads are usually warm so this is actually a video of a sentry trying to eat a dead snake or uh, this is a very common sight on the uh, near the road kills uh, there are snakes that try to eat dead frogs as well uh this is a very common thing that happens on the roads So uh, what happens is uh, just I'll, I'll just share uh, share this again. So roads are usually warm. Okay, roads uh, have sort of they collect heat during the day, and they are warmer than the surrounding mud. And snakes, being cold-blooded animals, do prefer this type of heat. Okay, the heat helps them. Uh, yes, sir. It helps them hunt prey and warm up their body. So they prefer the roads. Now what we need to do is we need underpasses 
to you know stop this. And snakes are one major. Sure, but it's not always like snakes will choose to go through the underpass and all. No? Yeah, it's it's not always, but it reduces the chance. Um, having bridges through, uh, you know, a wildlife area and all is a very important step. There's something called a linear development. Uh, okay, linear development. That talks about power lines and that talk, talks about these pipes and uh, and roads. Now, what we need to know is that when we have such a structure, it may not occupy a lot of space, but it cuts the jungle into two parts. And first, where there was migration in the jungle, where animals could freely move around, now they cannot. Now there, now we have two populations of the same animal, and when there is a smaller population. disease spread in animals very easily if there's a bigger population disease may not spread <clears throat> because there's more space for them to roam around so this is a big problem that's happening is called fragmentation of forest when forests are be- becoming into small species with small animal populations okay uh, we need to so what as children what you can do is you can talk about the solutions you can ask that we need uh, something important we need a, a more uh, we need people in power to actually think about this and they'll think about this only when people when the common people are thinking about it okay when you and me when we start talking about these issues when we are that we want such issues to be solved then the people in, and you guys are probably the future of the country so it's necessary that you even talk about these issues among your friends among your parents just have a discussion like we had a discussion today which is a really good so um, With that, we end the presentation. Thank you all for being here today. You have any questions? Okay, Ali has a solution. Yeah, Ali, please go ahead. So uh, we could uh, make the area protected, like no one is allowed to go there, and like uh, we could uh, all the snakes which are rescued could be kept there so that they are not harmed in any way. Actually, that is done. That is done. But now, um, one. this would you can release a venomous snake farm but non non venomous snakes are actually beneficial for us okay as you said the rat snake rat snakes are attracted by rats even cobras are attracted by rats and these snakes prefer being where rats are and rats prefer being where humans are so uh this is the time for the questions guys if anyone has questions want have doubts wants to say anything you can please go ahead Yeah, yeah, yes, please go ahead. Someone is going to ask a question now, I guess. I do not have any question. Okay, okay. Someone was going to. Uh, I thought I heard someone sound. Yes, okay, sir, it I, was someone uh, else. Okay, okay. If anyone has a question, you can uh, put it in the chat box or ask. Uh, we have a feedback form. Uh, whatever you feel about the. session you can put it down there meanwhile if you have any question you can ask uh, if there are no questions we can end the session it's up to you it's up to you okay then a fantastic session by the way uh, thanks for that uh, thank you so much thank you so much <laughs> i'd like to uh, ask one thing um, yeah. yeah very interactive very interactive um, i mean the kids had so much of uh, so much of input there is It is fantastic. Uh, yeah, your patience is uh, yeah. impeccable. <laughs> Actually, I like answering these questions. Actually, so. I like answering these questions. So. Fantastic. Uh, what my question was that uh, it, when when people think that uh, you know one snake will attract nine snakes, what was the reasoning behind that? I kind of missed that. Okay. uh it's an actually important thing that you know, it's an important question that uh, you asked so uh, actually there's an echo can you mute yes. okay thank you so okay th- there are two major reasons behind that okay that uh, i'll refer that there are two potential major reasons behind it. okay these might be the reasons one reason is when you kill one snake um the snake has probably has its season okay the snakes have their uh, breeding seasons and they have usually a uh, sand boas you'll find them slightly before the rains there is a snake called kukri that you'll find nearly at the end of the monsoon some snakes are active during the summers you know in colder areas so 
all of you see one snake you might kill them okay um and you might encounter the same snake tomorrow because it's the season okay the uh, because all all of the species all the snakes of the species are attracted uh, not attracted are sort of active in that one season um and the other reason is pheromones because uh, one person already written it in the chat section pheromones okay. how they play a big role is usually snakes to attract another partner they release some pheromones when a snake is killed okay um, this probably pheromones stay in that place and another part another snake looking for a partner would come to that place okay if it's attached if uh, if while killing the snake if something is you know if you use your shoe or something like that and a snake comes towards your shoe okay it's probably pheromones won't last that long but there is a slight chance that another snake might be attracted to those to the pheromones or it might it just might be the season uh, and uh, such you know such uh, factors lead to these myths now we can't trace the exact origin that this is you know this is what exactly happened but it's a gradual process of you know uh, it's a uh, by the whole wildlife community it's a gradual process of uh, hypothesizing that this might have been the cause does that answer your question yeah it's brilliant uh, brilliant answer and that it gives all the more reason not to kill a snake whether people know the right. reason or not <laughs> okay right thanks appreciate it okay thank you okay anyone else so yeah uh, so yes sir actually uh, when i was playing a cricket match and so i found a snake skin over there it had shedded its skin so i just wanted to ask which type of skin it was can i show you the photo of it um you can show us the photo but how would you show uh, us the photo so can present or something okay uh, we let you present I'm very the curious snake. see uh, to find out a snake just on the basis of the skin is actually difficult because you will need the head scale and the head scale count okay uh, and that may not be easy for every snake and once it's shedded skin yes sir so i can just show you yeah yeah please go ahead yes sir Yes, sir. This one. Hmm. This. Okay. So this snake, um, this can be one of two. This can be either a rat snake or a cobra because see, it has a it has a mid shaped long body. It's not a very yes, how how big was this? So wait a second. I'm going to have the photo. Yes, yeah, sir. This one. Okay. So yeah. So there are a few clues that can help us identify. So if it's this long, it probably is at least three a to cobra. four feet. Right? No, yes. no. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Cobra. Yes, sir. Easy. So three to four feet. So it can be either a crate, a cobra, mm -hmm. and or a rat snake. One of these three. Okay. Because uh, see, if you if it if if it would be a boa, it would have a slightly smaller no, and less. shorter structure. Yes. This is too long to be a boa. Or if it would have been a keel back, any other keel back, it would have been a bit more uh, smaller. Oh. Okay. So, and we need the head skill. Head skill is very important. Yes, sir. I didn't find the head scale actually, but I found the uh, the tip of I mean the tail section was them clear. You can see. Yeah, the tail section the tail section usually is clear because it's a smaller and more compact uh, yes. structure. So actually, when the snake sheds its tail, yeah. there's not a lot of tearing that happens. Yeah, over here you can see the tearing and there's no head. Actually, hmm. means it was like entangled between the bushes and everything, and right. that's why it was. So. Yeah, so actually, uh, we find a lot of snake skin because uh, because like yeah, the snake skin doesn't tend to move a lot. Uh, yes. Okay. Thank okay. you, sir. Uh, welcome. So, where is the feedback thing? So, the feedback is in the chat section. Okay. Okay. So I'll give it right now. In the chat now. section, and okay, guys, any any other question? Anything else you want to ask? No sir, there are no questions. No questions by everyone. Okay, uh, guys, thank you for attending the session. Um, did someone say something? Okay, so uh, thank you all for attending the session. It was amazing having such an interactive audience. All the questions, all the interest that you show really motivates us, uh, the person taking the session, to be more involved. Okay. And having said that, we would like to end the session now. Thank you all for doing your time and being present here today.
Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. You know, I'll just write a group welcome here because I can. Thank you, sir. I gave the feedback. Feedback. Yes, I also. Okay. So you don't need to tell me about that. It's fine. It's up to you. Thank you, sir. Bye, sir. Bye. Thank you, sir. Bye, sir. Thanks and bye. Thank you, everyone.